Hey friends, welcome back to these encouragement videos. Again, I tell you, it is our hope, it's our it's our deepest desire that these videos, they're not we don't just do these in vain um, and stick them up there online and maybe someone will watch it. Our deepest hope is that you are watching it right now, like you are, and that you would leave this time encouraged. So our prayer is that these are giving you courage, encouraging you to live the life of faith more fully and to go out there and, uh, and, and just be a faithful witness. Live a testimony to uh, God's glory and the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done in your life because it's remarkable what he's done. Um, just here in 1 Peter, the whole opening chapter, all of what God has done for us is amazing. In his great mercy, he's given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. And he goes on. And, um, and he opens in verse 6. Let, let me read this to you. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. And it's kind of an opening statement. Do you know what an inclusio is? An inclusio is like a couple of bookends. Okay, so, um, so there's content in the middle, and on either end of the content there is a statement. They sound really similar, but they're there to kind of tighten up or, or wrap up the pieces that he's talked about. And sometimes you don't even know they're there until you get to the ending one. That happened to me in 1 Peter right here. At the end of 1 Peter, verses 10 and 11 of chapter 5, he says, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him... Be the power forever and ever. Amen. Now, what Peter's done is he started his letter with kind of this statement of greatly rejoicing in trials for a little while, uh, suffering, and he's introducing these themes. And then he closes out his letter with kind of the same sentiment. Now, I think that's interesting, but I think what's even more interesting and more astounding even is uh, what Peter's saying in this last statement. Listen again. Uh, and the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. What you need to get, what ought to knock you off your feet, is the fact that God is not going to employ another to sort of stand us back upright after this after this little while, this season of being knocked down is over, okay? It's not going to be the angel's job to kind of pick us up and dust us off and, and kind of get us back on our feet again. It's not even going to be your closest friend's job. Peter says, it will be the God of all grace himself. He is the one who called us. He will greet us. He will... He will um, he, he will... He will stand us back up. He started in on us. He will finish out on us. The God of all grace himself will do this. And I think that should encourage you. No matter what you're going through right now, over these last six months, what you need to understand is that God himself will be the one to restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Those are powerful words, aren't they? Strong, firm, and steadfast. God himself will do that in you and for you. Rest assured, believe it, it's in God's word. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. We love you guys so much. We hope you're well. Take care.